Hi, this is Andrew Goodall from Nature's Image Photography and welcome to the second video in my Photography School series taking a step-by-step -step approach to teaching you how to shoot in manual mode. Now before we start, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you can be updated with new videos as they come online. In my first video, I tried to explain the value of being able to control your exposure manually. In this video, I want to introduce you to the three main settings we use to make that happen. They are the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO. Because they make such a nice, neat package of three, some people like to refer to them as the exposure triangle. We'll come back to the idea of the exposure triangle in a few minutes, but before we get to that, let's take a very simple look at how exposure takes place. And when I say simple, I do mean simple. Let's start by thinking of your camera as a tiny black room. It has four black walls. At the back of the room is the sensor, although you can't usually see it because it's inside the box. At the very front is a window that can open and close, but when the window is closed, the inside of the room is completely black. The sensor is the thing that actually takes the photo, but to do that it needs to get some light from the outside world. Most of the time there's no light coming in, but each time we press the button, the window opens, light comes in and hits the sensor to create our photograph. Now when it comes to exposing a photo, the critical thing is that the sensor needs the correct amount of light to produce a well exposed photograph. If it receives too much light, your photo will be overexposed, which means too bright. If the sensor doesn't receive enough light, the photo is underexposed or too dark. And this is where our camera settings come in. Shutter speed, aperture and ISO all affect the exposure in different ways. We'll be looking at them in much more detail in future videos, but here are the basics. First we come to shutter speed. Remember that when we press the button, the window, or now let's call it the shutter, opens. It's pretty easy to understand that if the window is open for a long time, it will let in a lot of light. But if it's only open for a very short time, it will let in less light. That's really all shutter speed is. It's the duration of the exposure, or quite simply, how long the window stays open. Now on to the aperture, and our picture is going to get just a little more complicated. If we're going to call the shutter a window, let's now imagine that there's a curtain across the window. As the shutter opens, if the curtain is closed, it will only let in a tiny amount of light. But if the curtain's wide open, it will let in a lot more light. So like a curtain, the aperture controls the intensity of the light coming into the sensor while the shutter's open, based on how wide we open the curtain. I should probably tell you right now that the aperture doesn't really open and close like a curtain. It's more like the iris in your eye. It opens to a wider circle to let in more light, and it closes down to a smaller circle to let in less light. But my picture is starting to look a little creepy, so for now, if I'm going to call the shutter a window, I'm sticking with the curtain idea. Finally we come to the ISO. Things get a bit more technical here because we're now looking at the electronics of the camera and the sensor itself. I'm no scientist so I have to break this down to the sort of simple terms that even I can understand. Now the sensor is hit by light when we open the shutter and it converts that light into an electronic signal to record it as an image. Increasing the ISO boosts or amplifies that signal. So if the sensor doesn't receive enough light for a well exposed image, Increasing the ISO can artificially boost the signal to improve the exposure. So now you can see there are actually three different settings that affect the exposure, and all three can be used to darken or lighten an image. Let's keep it simple and look at how we can use this information using the shutter speed alone. With any subject you choose, you can control the brightness simply by controlling how long the shutter stays open. You can make your photo darker with a faster shutter speed, you can make it brighter with a slower shutter speed. Find the right speed and you get a correctly exposed photo. The same can be done by opening and closing the aperture or by increasing and decreasing the ISO. Which brings us back to the idea of the exposure triangle, because exposure is not really controlled by just one setting. In fact, all three settings combine to give us total control over our exposure. For example, you might choose a fast shutter speed for a particular kind of photo, but when you do that, the light drops and your photo could be underexposed. But you could fix that by choosing a higher ISO, which would brighten the photo right back up. Let's try that a different way. You could open your aperture wider, which would let in extra light, but now your photo could be overexposed. This can easily be fixed with a faster shutter speed or a lower ISO. So you can see by balancing these three settings you have total control over how you expose your image. 
And that, my friends, is the story of the exposure triangle. Of course, as you probably know, there's a lot more to shutter speed, aperture and ISO, and I'll be taking a much closer look at them in future videos. But before we get there, I have one more important feature of the camera to introduce. In my next video, I'm going to introduce you to your new best friend, the light meter. Check it out when you can, and don't forget to subscribe to see more videos in this series as soon as they come online. I'm Andrew Goodall, and this is Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.